Liberating your devices from running proprietary software is one of the best things that you can do for the computers that are in your control. Free and open source software can also benefit you, primarily when it comes to privacy and security. Now, a lot of focus is put on the PC, but people don't usually think about FOSS in their networks, specifically using free and open source router firmware, which is what I'm going to be covering in this video. Now, it's arguably more important since the router is a single point of failure in a home network, and there have also been documented cases of router manufacturers, Linksys and Netgear, having backdoors that are built into their firmware that were discovered by security researchers. So these are some of the more popular consumer grade routers with remote access backdoors. And if you actually read this article, it was discovered twice. So the second time, the router manufacturers, they claimed to have fixed the backdoor with a patch, but what they really did was they left the back door in place and they just made it so that it could only be activated by sending a specifically crafted packet to the router over the same port 32764. Um, and that special packet would sort of serve as like a secret knock uh, for that back door to open up. So the fact that this back door exists was reported as a security concern and kept in place by the firmware manufacturer that tells you that this backdoor is intentional and probably deployed to be used by some sort of government agency. Uh, so we can't trust the manufacturer to include safe firmware with our router, so we must flash FOSS firmware to it. Now, before I show you uh, the firmware, there's a few things that you should know. First is that different routers are going to be compatible with different firmwares. So I'm going to be installing a uh, fresh tomato that's the firmware that i'm going to be using to a netgear nighthawk r7000 so i know that my compatibility is fine if your router doesn't have a broadcom wi-fi chipset it probably isn't going to work with tomato but there's other firmwares that you can use um, like ddwirt and openwirt which I'm probably gonna do videos about those as well because uh, I have an extra router that I'm using for testing. Uh, but Fresh Tomato is generally considered one of the easiest open router firmwares to use. Uh, just make sure that you're downloading Fresh Tomato and not Advanced Tomato because this is a different router firmware. Uh, I believe Fresh Tomato is actually a fork of Advanced uh, Tomato, but Advanced Tomato, it's been abandoned. Like you can see, this is the latest version um, that was released and it looks like November of 2017. So that's a few years old. Um, there's been all sorts of different vulnerabilities to Wi-Fi and things like that since then. So you're not gonna want to use a uh, super old build, obviously. So with Fresh Tomato, uh, you can go to freshtomato.org and I'll have links in the description. Uh, so first, we want to make sure our router is compatible, right? So supported routers. Um, I know that mine is compatible, but this site is useful for you to go to anyway because you want to know what your CPU type of your router is uh, unless you knew that already. So keep that in mind um, and course double check to make sure your router is actually on this list and then we can go to download to get um, the firmware that we want so uh, remember there were two different CPU types either the MIPS or the ARM so I know that mine is an ARM CPU uh, and then we want to go to 2021 get the latest um, so 2021 4 this is the you know latest one obviously but you wanna make sure that you have a dedicated build for your router. So like if I go in here, um, we see that they just have this and there's a build for the R7000 or, or for the R8000 rather, but not the R7000. Um, I'm not gonna try this one on my router because I'm pretty sure it's uh, not backwards compatible. So then we'll go to the next highest one. Um, and this is a good sign because we have the initial files and we have uh, both of these ARM files or folders rather. So if we go in here, I um, believe the R7000 was in here. Yeah, so there's two different kinds. There's an all-in-one and there's a VPN version. So uh, the all-in-one has a whole lot of features. 
Um, probably many more features <laughs> than you'll use. Um, also, pretty much the whole point of doing this too, besides just obviously using free and open source firmware is to get more, basically to get more out of your router because the firmware that you're given, like this is the stock firmware, it doesn't give you a whole lot of functionality. Um, so yeah, this is the all-in-one and then VPN is a sort of stripped down version, but it also has uh, functionality, I believe to use your router as a VPN endpoint. All right, so go ahead and download that. And you also want to download the initial file as well. So this is gonna be uh, sort of like a startup that we're going to use to load up the firmware. So we're going to load this first and then we're going to uh, load that custom firmware. Uh, so go ahead and log into your router. It's most likely going to be the IP 10.0.0.1 or maybe 192.168.1.1 uh, and log in with your admin credentials. And you're going to want to go into the administration tab um, in the, here, let me log in real quick. So in the um, Netgear, you're going to be on the basic tab like this. Go to advanced administration router update and then you want to locate and select the upgrade file on your hard disk and I'm going to be choosing that initial 64k.chk and then upload and it might have a screen like this telling you that the Firmware you're uploading is older, that's fine, just hit yes. And this will take a little while to update the firmware, maybe a couple of minutes. All right, my router has finished rebooting. Uh, you may lose connection to your router. Uh, what you can do is, of course, you can just run an IF config uh, or IP config if you're on Windows from your command prompt to check and see if you're still connected to the router. And if you lose connection, like obviously you won't lose a physical connection because you're connected with Ethernet, uh, just change your IPv4 settings to manual and just set your address and gateway. You could even change it to a, a 192 uh, 168 network if you wanted to and then just put in your gateway address again 10.0.0.1 like I have up here and it's going to prompt you to log in now the login is also different because you see it's not um, it doesn't have the stock firmware on it anymore so your uh, regular username is just going to be admin as usual and the password is going to be new dig at new dig if you're using uh, fresh tomatoes initial firmware like I use there so now to load the final firmware you want to click on the advanced tab and then you want to go to administration and upgrade and then here we want to browse for the AIO 64k.trx or VPN if you downloaded that one instead but just pay attention to the file extension, make sure it's the TRX and upgrade and hit OK. And then that's going to take a little while to flash it. All right, and it was successful. So we're going to wait for the router to reboot now. All right, so I'm rebooted into my router and you can see that I've got the latest version or at least the latest version for the R7000 uh, 2021.3. And there we go. So I'm running uh, Fresh Tomato now and I've got access to 
all of these different uh, like VPN tunneling, like this is something that wasn't in the uh, Netgear configuration. So like I said, there's, or I should say the Netgear uh, default firmware. Uh, so yeah, there's a whole lot of things that you can do with this. Um, I'll probably show some more, like make some more videos about things you can do in this that you can't do in stock firmware and maybe some videos about DDWirt and OpenWirt as well. Um, they don't, uh, if I remember correctly, the DDWirt and OpenWirt firmwares don't work very well if you have Broadcom Wi-Fi chipsets. Uh, so I might actually have to get a different router or maybe I can just use it as um, like just as a router and not as a wireless access point just for uh, the example. Uh, but there you go. Now you're up and running with FOSS firmware on your router. Make sure to add in all your network configurations, Wi-Fi passwords and all that good stuff. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to share it, like it and subscribe. Have a great day.